In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted Volturnus, High King of the Deep, for the Eidoneth Deepkin faction of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This guy. We're starting right now. What's going on guys? Jared here from Mini Junkie with another tutorial video. If this is your first time here and you're interested in the hobby of painting war game, board game, or tabletop miniatures, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So guys, Volturnus is a, it's a beautiful model, one of the, one of the better models in the range of Eidneth Deepkin. And so because of that, I had to spend a little extra time on him to get him to look awesome. And this video is therefore accordingly a bit longer. I did try to edit it down, cut out some of the basic steps or cover them as fast as I can. Like some of the stuff is just basic, like painting the boots brown and things like that. But one of the cool things is for this video and for this, the creature, I think it's called a deep mare. Anyway, whatever he's riding, I painted him using uh, some new paints, or at least they're new to me. And those are the Green Stuff World Color Shift paints. And in the case of this one, I used Toxic Purple from that line. This video is a little bit raw as well in the sense that I'm going to show you in some cases, mistakes that I made or ways that I just, you know, at times I changed my mind or maybe I approached things differently than I was planning to. And in some cases I flat out screwed up and how I, how I went about fixing that. So let's get over to the painting table and get to work on this guy. Okay guys, so here's a look at the final version of Volturnus we're going to be painting today. I'm priming him in a few different colors, but the majority of the model is primed white followed by a prime of black on things like the uh, cape, which I was going to paint in a very, very dark blue. I'm actually going to be priming the mount um, with a gloss black so that the color shift paint will work. And I do that later on because I want to avoid getting overspray on that gloss black prime. First base color is Vallejo Model Air Fire Red, which I'm applying to the body of the mount. Um, you can hand brush most of the steps if not all of them uh, in this tutorial but I do use the airbrush for a number of them mostly for the sake of speed. The fire red is actually quite a translucent paint which I wasn't anticipating so even little bits of the black primer splatter are showing there so I had to use a few coats to kind of cover that up. Plus there's going to be some highlights later that'll help cover them up as well. On those tentacles, I went and applied a white primer highlight just on like the raised bumps of those tentacles, which later I'm going to essentially glaze or paint over so that it creates a, a bit of an under under color for them to brighten up the highlights. It's like the worst explanation I've ever given in a tutorial. Next is a uh, base color of Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue, so a very dark blue will work. Uh, there's plenty of options out there. And you'll notice, you can see that the scales of the mount are not primed yet. And like I said, it's because while I'm doing airbrush steps, I want to avoid applying that primer and getting um, splatter on the gloss black of the scales that I'm going to be painting. Speaking of which, this is the gloss black primer I used, um, Vallejo Surface Primer. It's a water base, which is nice. I'm applying it to the crest over his head because I'm going to use the gold color shift on that. And then I apply it to the um, scales of the mount because I'm going to use the toxic purple color shift paint on him. I also apply it to the shield uh, with the intent of using the emerald green color shift, but you'll see later that I didn't like that and I end up painting over it. So this is mistake number one on this model. Going back on with the fire red on the tentacles to spray over the, um, the white highlights I applied earlier. And I'd say this is mistake number two in the sense that because I put it on so thick, it really doesn't create a highlight at all. And so that becomes kind of a wasted step. Um, it would have been smarter to go over with a lighter color or more translucent color to retain that highlight I had applied. First highlight I'm applying to the tentacles is Model Air Yellow Ochre. Um, this, I'm pretty, you know, imprecise with this. I'm trying to, when, when it comes to creatures and skin and scales and things like that, um, because they're organic, I try not, well, I'm lazy, so I don't apply them perfectly you know what I mean like I don't apply the perfect highlights that that don't go over the wrong areas and stuff and, and I'm okay with that because it's a natural creature and it wouldn't look 
precise and perfect anyway. So this is the first application of the color shift paint. In this case it's burning gold which I'm applying to the crest over his head and my impatience with painting comes through here in the sense that I don't follow the directions properly. You're really supposed to apply thin coats, let them dry, do multiple coats, and build up the paint from there. So if you do it right, it probably looks awesome. For me, <laughs> impatient as always, I try to apply one relatively thick coat using my airbrush, not giving enough time for it to dry, um, not using it properly. And so on the front, I really messed up. Like the back turned out okay and I left it. On the front, it started to create some pooling in between those rib things and so I end up that I'm going to have to repaint that section. Next I apply Vallejo Game Air Moon Yellow over those um, yellow ochre highlights on the tentacles. Uh, again, you could hand brush this just, I mean, if you use this exact paint, it's already basically thinned out of the pot because it's airbrush paint, but um, you know, it's a very bright yellow and again, yellows like this are quite translucent as well. So you're not going to get a super opaque um, highlight. You're going to build it up over a couple coats. At this point, I use the um, color shift paint, um, toxic purple. Again, this is from green stuff world ordered it directly from Spain. Um, this was interesting because it doesn't shift between two different like color colors. It shifts between dark purple and light purple and black, so to speak. Like it's basically a really cool, like shiny purple metallic effect, which I think looks really great on this mount. But the other paints, uh, I think you can shift between two distinct colors. In this case, that's not really what's happening. I do believe you could hand brush this, but you just want to be applying thin coats, letting them dry for sure. And you know, you're probably going to need to build it up over several coats, but it would work, I believe. Then I went and blasted Emerald Getaway um, color shift paint onto the shield. Um, I don't know, didn't quite work for me. I think the area is quite small, so you're not going to get a lot of that effect. Um, and I was over spraying onto the purple, like being sloppy and eh, this step wasn't great. And so in the end, I end up going back over it with the color of the of Volturnus's armor later in the in the tutorial which I guess is my way of saying you could basically skip this step if you want, or you could try and make this color work because it is a pretty cool color. Next, I pretty much apply a glaze effect of Troll Slayer Orange over the yellow highlights we've applied so that we're gonna try and, well, make them more orange, make them blend into that fire red underneath a little bit better. Um, this is a very translucent paint, so it's easy to achieve that effect. I mentioned earlier that I basically messed up the front of the crest with that uh, burning gold paint. So here what I've done is I've sprayed a primer of white over it. Um, and you can see it's effectively an off-white color because that gold was really coming through. And I, once that was dry, I'm applying Fugan Orange Wash right from the pot over it. As always, I bounce around different parts of the model while one area is kind of drying or curing, I paint another. Using Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue, I'm going to spray back over that cloak where a lot of overspray and splatter has been hitting it and, and so I just wanted to clean it up in, a, in preparation for highlighting it later on. Continuing to recover that crest, I take Gold Yellow Vallejo Game Air and spraying it around the outside of the crest, out, outer edges of it. Um, again, a very translucent paint, so that orange wash continues to show through, and I apply a few different layers, um, allowing it to dry between each layer. Again, allowing each layer to dry, I use moon yellow um, towards even further out to the outer edges of the crest, um, applying a few different layers because, again, very translucent paint. I follow that up with white. Uh, I use primer a lot. That Vallejo white primer is essentially a nice white paint, so I use it in the, you know, interchangeably between priming and just painting white. And in this case, I fade it out to white on the very outer edges of this um, crest. Then 
Then I shaded towards the inner ring of that crest using the Troll Slayer Orange Airbrush Mix. Again, very translucent paint, easy to blend it here um, with the airbrush and just went around the inner ring of this crest with it. So you can see my process for fixing that crest after I screwed it up. Some steps in this are very simple. In this case, I just took gunmetal and airbrushed it over the sword. But you can very much, you know, hand brush this with a lead belch or any gunmetal you want to use over the sword. There's nothing special about this part. Now I airbrushed a few different highlight layers using Imperial Blue, adding a bit of airbrush, airbrush flow improver and some white because the, um, the white need, is why you need to add a little bit of the flow improver because it'll be thick. Um, and to do this again, I would just, I'd highlight it and then I'd let that dry as I added another bit of white to it, highlight it again, and just build the highlights out to the highest raised areas of the cape. Same thing here, just adding a bit of the white primer to that mix um, and applying another highlight. So this is really simple. It's a, highlighting the cape by applying, uh, mixing white into the Imperial Blue for several, well, I'm gonna say I, I probably did four or five layers. Then to do some of the more precise layers on the cape, I just dumped that mix right into my palette and added white to that in the palette. And what I end up doing is just um, hand brushing along some of the raised edges of the cape, the sharpest edges, um, just putting some sharper, brighter highlights onto the cape. Remember to add a little bit of water or flow improver to this just to keep it thin. And like I said, just applying, you know, just hand brushing onto the raised portions of the cave, especially the very sharp folds. And I painted on a few very thin light lines along the larger folds just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. To darken some of the shaded shaded areas of the cape, I use Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm using it right out of the pot, mostly out of laziness and not out of being the smartest thing to do. Um, I would say you could easily thin this maybe like with one third Lamian medium just to create a, you know, and then go over with a few layers to make create a more gradual um, blended shade effect. Um, in my case, for whatever reason, I didn't do that. Another simple step, I airbrushed Vallejo Metal Color Silver onto the sharper bladed area of the sword. Once again, this is a step you can very easily hand brush and in fact it'll be more precise if you do so. Um, you could use something like a Rune Fang Steel for example. It took me a while to decide how I wanted to paint the frills on the creature, um, on its tentacles and, and the crests, but I uh, decided to go for like a lighter yellowy um, so not a huge contrast but definitely something that stood apart um, and I began that by base coating it with Averlin Sunset. When that base layer was dry I went in and shaded it with Fugan Orange right out of the pot. You can't see very much of his pants or sleeves under the armor, so uh, but I decided on a dark blue that matches the cape, so I used Imperial Blue Air, Game Air, and uh, just hand painted it with a brush. And I don't think I show it on, on the uh, video, but um, the highlighting was done similar to the cape where I just added white to the base blue a couple times for layers. The only flesh on the model is the head, so I applied a base coat of Warp Fiend Grey which is the same, I'm basically doing the same skin effect that I did on the Namarti Thralls. It's a very, very almost white, pale, purplish color flesh. Another simple step, I just base coated the horn with a layer of Administratum Gray from GW. 
Um, it looks like I'm going right out of the pot, but I was, um, you know, mixing in a little bit of water haphazardly off camera here. Like, I don't create a big mix when I'm painting something with such a small area. Now for the gold areas, uh, I used a base of Retributor Armor, which I'm becoming quite fond of, as I think it has really nice coverage. I painted that on the center of the crest and the sort of spine of it going down towards his armor. And I don't think I did it in this step, but eventually I do go back and I painted it on things like, um, well, any gold you can see in the final product. So a little crest behind his head, there's um, his stirrups and a few other spots. I do the tassels here the same way I did the Namarti thralls with a bit of thin Moro white uh, to create an undercolor of white on the tassels, which I then go in and tint uh, with inks and washes. This is my custom gold wash of Agrax Earthshade Gloss with a third added to the bottle of Reichland Flesh Shade Wash. So it gives you a reddish brown. I apply this um, over all the gold areas. To highlight the crests, the sort of ribs and the crests of the of the creature, I used Game Air Gold Yellow. It's very, very thin and translucent, so you almost can't see uh, the application of it in the video. This is the mix I use for the armor of my Eidneth. It's Emerald Alchemy and Cobalt Alchemy from Scale 75. It's a 50-50 mix, and I paint that. Um, don't really thin it much because water doesn't work well with it. Um, I use a little bit of Vallejo airbrush thinner on my palette when I need to, but most of it I try to move quickly and paint. You know, if you had a wet palette like like a smart painter, um, this wouldn't dry out so fast. And yeah, I still have one coming in the mail. But yeah, I just apply this to any of the armor panels that are still waiting to be painted. And I obviously hand brush this because it's no use trying to airbrush at this point. When that armor's dry, I apply a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamium Medium 50-50 over it. And I don't think it's on the video, but when that dries um, and make sure it's thoroughly dry, I did take that base um, color I had mixed of the two uh, alchemy colors and just apply some highlights to the raised edges and things to bring back some of that shine. Used Vallejo Game Color Electric Blue to create, um, create, to paint the uh, raised edges and patterns along the um, the trim of the cape and that symbol on the back of the cape so just slowly and carefully uh, hand hand paint that to highlight the trim um, i would go and apply a thinned layer of um, the original electric blue with a bit of white mixed into it as you can see here uh, for probably three or four layers and it was interesting because the white you know, white usually brightens up a color a lot, but in my case, um, I was finding it really wasn't showing a distinct layer. You can kind of see it in the video, but it was surprisingly subtle, so I definitely had to do three or four layers. Here you'll see I took my gold wash and I'm applying it to some of the areas that I painted gold after doing that blue armor. So, for example, the center of the um, armor on the on the mount. For the tassels, I gave them a glaze of Lamenter's yellow. You can also use Vallejo Game Ink yellow, um, just to create um, a nice tint of yellow on them over the white, white that we applied earlier. For the ribbing on the crest and tail of the creature, I used Troll Claws from Army Painter. And just hand painted that on and make sure it's thin enough so it's not gonna go on super, super thick and gloopy. Gloopy is a very, it's a highly technical term you, you'll become familiar with as you become a better painter. I highlighted those with by applying some white into the mix with the troll claw. Um, you can use any white you want, that'll work fine. Just a couple drops just to create a, a lighter version of it and just apply it to the um, the ends or, or you know above the midpoint of each of those sort of ribby things. I wish I had a better name for those. For the tassels, now that the yellow ink has dried, um, or the yellow glaze, just go right over them out of the pot with Fugan Orange, and the yellow bright sort of highlights on those tassels will shine through. I really like this next step because the Cassandora yellow um, on those frills and crests takes what looked like a pale, kind of unimpressive looking 
yellowy highlight and really punched it up and made it look really quite nice. This next step is a fixer step where I took that 50-50 of the two alchemy colors and went back and you know cleaned up that blue armor, um, added a few more highlights and just made sure it looked nice and neat and sharp. Um, going back and fixing and cleaning up is a step you should often do. Super exciting step, painting the tiny amount of boots you can see. I based with Rhinox Hide and highlighted with Doom Bowl Brown. Not really even worth showing in the video because it's a very, very basic step. For his eye patch and the strap, I went over it with Vallejo Game Ink Black, so it wasn't a very thick and opaque black. It was a little bit lighter, a little bit more blended, and just it's very forgiving stuff, so it's easier sometimes to paint small details black with this. Um, and then I'll be, wherever it sort of leaks over or onto the skin, I'll just be cleaning that up when I highlight the skin. Before doing the full paint job on his head, I, I cleaned up the skin areas with the Warp Fiend Gray, because um, by now I've gotten black and gold and blue onto things like his chin or his cheek or things like that, so I just neatened up his the base coat. Lazy Painter strikes again. I decided the claws on the mount would look just fine painted black, and I just took, I didn't try to do anything crazy here, I just took the black ink that was still left over from the eye patch and painted it over the claws, like literally right over that purple metallic color, and just let the let the layers dry each time and just basically gave them a nice black look and they turned out pretty good. Another fixed step. So by now um, the purple, toxic purple scales have gotten some other colors onto them, um, which is my bad. So I hand brush the um, toxic purple over anywhere that I've got overspray or for example got that emerald blue color on them and just fix that up. I shaded the flesh with Druki Violet and Lamian Medium 50-50. The inside of the creature's mouth was based with uh, Screamer Pink. wasn't really feeling like putting a ton of effort into this uh, base decoration but it had to be painted and what's interesting is the um, earlier steps had created kind of an interesting corroded underwater look to it already so first I washed it with Coelia green shade bouncing around I went to paint the little uh, runic icons on the sword with rune fang steel I used Ulthuan gray for the highlighting of the um, the horn just the curving edges, which I actually found kind of difficult to get neat. I used Blue Horror to paint the eyes of the creature, which are basically just tiny dots, and you can honestly paint those whatever color you want. Um, I would recommend a brighter color that will help it stand out from the dark purple surroundings. Highlighting the skin was done by taking the base Warp Fiend Gray and adding white and a little bit of thinner of your choice, whether it's water or glaze medium or thinner medium, and honestly any white you want. Very straightforward, I'm just applying lighter and lighter highlights to his head and, and to the raised areas of like his brow or his nose or his cheekbones and things like that. And I did probably three different layers, adding more and more white each time. We're in the lots of little details to finish up phase. I used Karak stone to base coat the teeth of the mount. For that rocky thing on the base, now that the Coelia had dried, I used um, an olive green and just dry brushed it on. You could use a camo green or Elysium green, and I was pretty happy with how that looked. Now for the eye, I used Meneth white highlight. Generally, I won't use a, a pure white as it's too stark, and I try to get my paint brush to a chisel tip rather than a rounded tip paint an eye and it's really hard to film because I just didn't really have a great macro type lens on this camera but I try to show as best I can it's not the best 
When that's dry, I use black. Uh, I think I use black ink. And you want a rounded tip because now you're painting the pupil. And you hold your breath, you brace your hands, and you slowly, carefully paint that pupil in. That's how I do eyes. I really wish I could get a sharper picture of this for you guys, and I totally failed. When that had dried, I took the Druki Violet that we washed his um, face and skin with and took it right out of the pot to create some darker purplish shade around the eye just to create some definition there. And that's basically the last step. When it comes to varnish, I'd be very careful with matte varnish. You don't want to get it on the, the purple or any of the color shift or any of the metallic paints. I'd recommend hand painting any varnish um, that you want to use. Here's a look at the finished Volturnus. Um, if you have questions about any of this, please post them below. I will do my best to answer. And the base he's on uh, was created using the technique in another video, which I will link here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends, like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and we'll see you next time.